Hi, today we are here in my power room of the off-grid system and I had a problem with this inverter. So I cannot show you what the problem looked like. Uh, I had basically under voltage produced by this inverter for many months now. Uh, and today I tried to find out what happened. So I went and reset the machine and after I reset the machine it woke up with a, just a green screen and all LEDs have been lit and it would not boot up and start anymore. Uh, so the problem was initially uh, low output AC voltage. So the machine produced, even it thought it produced 230 volts, it only produced uh, somewhere between 205 and uh, 210 volts. I took the machine apart and uh, tried to find the fault and I could actually repair the machine and this is what I want to show you in this video. So I disconnected the AC, the grid power from the inverter so that it does not uh, switch over to the grid. I disconnected the DC from the sol solar system. I switched off the battery. This here is my 10 kilowatt hours lithium polymer pack. And the manual transfer switch is now on grid power so all these uh, panels here are supplied by the grid now okay in the meantime i have opened the inverter just for a, a visual inspection and uh, let me show you how this looks inside so this here, the main part in the back, this, this PCB, this is the, the DC and AC main board. Uh, there's all the power electronics on this one. And here on the side, that PCB, that is the controller unit. So the processor, all the logic uh, for the inverter and uh, the display. And here on the app, that is the MPPT uh, charge controller, in my case an 80 amp uh, version. So, interestingly, uh, I found now the date of uh, manufacturing, uh, which is 2016 uh, September. So, yeah, this is already quite uh, old. Uh, inverter and it never had problems so more than four and a half years maybe four years in operation no problems at all and i already the visual inspections found a problem i think you know because actually the inverter is not showing any faults uh, it does not know that there is a, pr uh, a problem with it so that, that is kind of uh, showing uh, just that uh, some components might be uh, aged and it is just changing uh, the parameters of the inverter without the inverter knowing it. And look at this here. You see those two caps, the smaller caps there, but that one and then that one below it is slightly blown out already. So it's expanded, it did not blow yet. Probably if it blows then, then the inverter is off. Then the inverter will not work anymore. But they already started to expand. So this is very typical for old uh, electronics. The electrolytic capacitors are starting to expand and then one day they will just blow out and the unit will be faulty. I think this might be already our problem and uh, we should take it out and exchange with new ones then. So here's the unit on the table now. Uh, I will disassemble as much as I can 
and then make a thorough uh, visual inspection. Uh, maybe we can find some other parts. I already looked in my spare parts, I found some capacitors. Uh, unfortunately not one, which is 1000 microfarad for 35 volts. Uh, I only have smaller ones, smaller voltage capacitors, but uh, we will find a solution for that just to try it out. Okay, let's take it apart and uh, give it a visual check. Okay, so here, removed from the top, the MPP T charge controller, which worked uh, without problems, so we are not going to touch anything there. Okay, with this remaining, we only have the main, the con controller board there and the power board. And here in this area, you can see uh, here was a communications cable from the MPPT charger uh, and it's also slightly burnt so this was here at these capacitors so I'm assuming that uh, the problem is really in this area so we are going to exchange these two capacitors with new ones and then check Okay, here are the lower fans. This one is the controller unit. And finally the power board, also out of the shell. Uh, I'm going to make a visual inspection now from top to bottom and front to back and see if there is maybe some other problems on the board. So first I give it a little bit cleaning. There is of course after so many years a lot of dust. Actually not a lot but there's some dust here where the fans have been situated. So I'm just using a very soft painter's brush and give it a slight touch and blow out the dust. So the MOSFETs and the trans transistors, they look all very nice because uh, I bought actually a very oversized unit for my uh, demands here on our off-grid system uh, just to uh, give it a very easy uh, life during the operation. So yeah, let's turn it over. What we don't want to find anywhere is some discolorations on the board. So this is the back side of the area with the capacitors. And yeah, it, it looks like it has a little bit brownish discoloration here. So there's a MOSFET here. And then the caps. Uh, I will check out the readings for the capacitors with my meter and then let's see what they have left over from the original capacitance. So, the two capacitors are removed. Messy board shoots. Here the two capacitors are gone now. And uh, yeah, both are 1000 microfarad. One is 16 volts and the other one is a... 1 also 1000 microfarads but 35 volts. So let's measure them out. Okay, I have a capacitor meter here, number one. So this one instead of 1000 microfarad it only have 116. And 
and this one instead of 1000 microfarad only 46 both of these capacitors are basically completely used up so as you see here we have this bulge which is indicating that there is uh, uh, already the life of this is already over the problem now is for the 35 volts 1000 microfarad i only have uh, at 35 volts 470 microfarad as a replacement but this is still four times uh, more than this one has capacitance and the other one the 1000 microfarad 16 volts i have a replacement for that one which is similar to that and that one is a 25 volt 1000 microfarad so this this will work out so i'm going to take some wick and make those uh, holes uh, clean again and then we can put the two new capacitors into their places The new caps are both soldered in. Okay, let me show it to you. Okay, so here the two new capacitors on the board. And I found another issue here on the controller board. Here is a pin header and uh, those are exposed pins and they have been bent, some of them, when I saw them and touching each other. So uh, I took some shrink tube now and I will protect all those pins so that they cannot touch each other anymore. This place here I want to show you, uh, you see here all these uh, connectors for the AC and inside these cables do have these uh, big ferroid rings here, uh, filters and right underneath of these rings and heavy cables there is this uh, header pins from the control board and these ones, right there, the first ones I found bent, so uh, of course I don't know if it was bent already before or if I did it when I disassembled the machine, but you have to be careful with that place when you do this. Okay, so the lower part and the power board is installed, now comes the uh, MPPT control and then it is already finished again. components are in and connected the final job is to close the machine again and uh, go to the power room 
connect to the outside and then dry it out. So overall I have to say quite easy to disassemble this machine. Uh, if we can fix the problem, we of course don't know yet. Uh, we just fixed the obvious. So if there would be some IC chip or whatever uh, not working, then then uh, I can do much at this point and probably have to order another power board. But uh, yeah. Let's hope for the best and go to the power room and put it on the wall. The inverter is connected again, so let's try to power it up. Battery on. And on switch. Oh, wow. That was not like that before. And look at this, oh my god. Wow. Let's put the solar panel on, DC. Solar is on and now connect to the grid. And we have grid symbol. The inverter is charging and here again 228. We fixed it. This was a successful fix. Before I couldn't show you before because I actually switched off the inverter and then it did not boot up anymore and before this uh, meter was showing 208 volts up to 212 so it was uh, just uh, fluctuating and the voltage was going up and down so that was it this was the successful repair uh, my inverter was built by a company called uh, must power it is just one of the many Chinese companies which are building these PIP 5048 inverters. This one is just called PV 185048 or other companies are calling them MPV 5048. It's all the same, they all have the same boards inside. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, please like and uh, subscribe if you have some comments. Uh, then please leave it below and uh, I have many videos about solar and the build of a power wall, DIY power wall uh, in my playlist so if you're interested in this topic please check the playlist and look for other videos. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.